A vector function is a vector whose components are functions. Let's say we have our vector. And let's suppose our vector has components of a function of t for the x component, a function of t for the y component, and another function of t for the z component. To find the definite integral of our vector function r of t, we simply just have to find the definite integral of each of the components of our vector function independently. So that would be the definite integral of the x component of our vector function, the definite integral of the y component of our vector function, and the definite integral of the z component of our vector function. This is going to yield a different vector function based off of the results of the integration. Let's see this with an example. Suppose we have the definite integral from 0 to 1 of the vector function that has an x component of t squared, a y component of 1 over t plus 1, and a z component of e to the minus t. To evaluate this definite integral, we just have to evaluate the definite integrals of each of the components. So that would be the definite integral from 0 to 1 of t squared dt, and the def that's the x component. The y component is the definite integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over t plus 1 dt. And the z component is the definite integral from 0 to 1 of e to the minus t dt. Let's evaluate each of these components independently. Let's start off with the x component. The indefinite integral from 0 to 1 of t squared dt ends up being 1 third t cubed evaluated from 0 to 1. This is 1 third times 1 cubed minus 0 cubed, which ends up being 1 third for the x component of the definite integral of our vector function. Let's now do the y component of the definite integral of our vector function. This is then the definite integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over t plus 1 dt. On this one, let's do a u substitution. So let's Let's make u equal to t plus 1, which means du is going to be equal to dt. Let's recognize that when t is equal to 0, this is for the lower limit of integration. Then since u is equal to 2 plus 1, u is going to be equal to 1 when t is equal to 0 for the lower limit of integration. And for the upper limit of integration, when we allow t to be equal to 1, that's going to correspond to u equals t plus 1, which is 1 plus 1, which is equal to 2. This means that our definite integral Switching over into u space has a lower limit of 1, an upper limit of 2, 1 over u du. So this is what our u substitution did for us, is it transformed our integral from an integration in t space to an integration in u space. I did this so I could evaluate the 1 over u, for I re recognize that when we take the antiderivative of 1 over u, that's going to be just natural log of the absolute value of u. Being a definite integral, this is evaluated from u equals 1 to u equals 2. This becomes then the natural log of 2, 
minus the natural log of 1. The natural log of 1 evaluates to The natural log of 1 evaluates to 0. This means that the y component of our definite integral from 0 to 1, 1 over t plus 1 dt, is equal to the natural log of 2. Well, now we found the x component of our definite integral. We've now found the y component of the definite integral. Now we have to find the z component of the definite integral. For the z component of the definite integral, we have the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the minus t dt. This is just minus e to the minus t evaluated from 0 to 1. This is minus e to the minus 1 minus a minus e to the minus 0, which is minus 1 over e plus 1. The plus 1 is because e to the minus 0 is the same as e to the 0, which is the same as 1. And a minus times a minus is a positive. Now we could say that the definite integral from 0 to 1 of the vector function t squared 1 over t plus 1 and e to the minus t dt is equal to one third natural log of two and one minus one over e.